Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be doing part two of chapter three, or part four of my algebra series. We're going to be doing completing the square. So, completing the square adds in a new formula for us to learn. V over two squared. Now, this gives, so when you complete the square, the equations are incomplete, and then you need to complete them using this formula. So for instance, x squared plus 8x plus c. Now we need to solve for c. So we use the equation b over 2 squared. So we have 8 that we have 8 is b and we plug it in over here. So that gives us 8 divided by 2, which is 4 take uh, squared that is 4 squared is 16. 16, so C equals 16. And let's find out if this actually works. X squared plus 8X plus 16. Now, what plus what equals 8 and what times what equals 16? 4. X plus 4. X plus 4 that equals this equation. So this works. Let's try another one of those to see if it works again. Z squared plus 24 plus C. B is 24. 24 divided by two is 12. 12 squared is 144. So Z squared plus 24 Z plus 144. Four. Let's see if this works. What plus what is 24 and what times what is 144? 12. Z plus 12 and Z plus 12. This gets that equation. Completing the square is pretty easy. So let's do a different uh, type of completing the square. This type of completing the square is when a equals 1. Let's take an example of this r squared minus 6r minus 2 equals 0. Now, we already have c, so what we just did for finding c, we can't use that. So we need to add 2 to both sides, so we get r squared minus 6r equals 2. Now we do the exact same thing we did before with b over two squared. So we get six divided by two equals three, three squared equals nine. And we add this now to both sides. So it's gonna be r squared minus six r plus nine equals 11. We can take this equation and let's see what plus what equals what times what? We already found three over here. So we can turn this into three minus, uh, r minus three and r minus three equals 11. Take the square roots of these, we'll get r minus three equals plus or minus the square root of 11. We need to add three to both sides for our final answer of r equals three plus or minus the square root of 11. That is our final answer. To make sure you guys understand this, I'm gonna do it one more time. x squared plus 10x plus 28 equals zero. 10 divided by two is four. 5 squared is 25. Oh, for other. So it's going to be x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals negative 28 plus 25. That's going to turn out to be again x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals negative three. And of course, what plus what equals what? What times what equals what? Five. X 
plus 5 squared. I'll just do that instead of writing both of uh, both equations. Now we can take the square roots of these. It's going to be x plus 5 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Uh, but remember, i equals the square root of negative 1. So it's going to be i. Then you minus 5, minus 5. You get x equals negative 5 plus or minus i square roots of 3. Final answer. Next, we get to learn about the quadratic formula. Now, this is one of the easiest formulas to remember if you get it stuck in your head right. It's going to be x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 a c over 2 a now many people have written songs about this formula and they just make it so easy to remember so once you have this equation negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 ac over 2 a you just plug in the numbers for example let's use this equation x squared minus 7 x minus 18 equals 0. This is a, b, c. Now, where it says b, a, c, a, you just plug in these in their spots. So, x equals, this is b, this is negative, but this is negative, so they cancel out. This is going to be 7 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 18 over 2 because 2 times 1 is 2. Now from this you can just start factoring it out. So this is going to be 49 this is going to be 49, then these are going to equal to 72. So you just add them together, 49 plus 72 equals 21, I mean 121. So it's going to end up looking like 7 plus or minus 121 over 2. I'll just, I'll just write that. Okay. Now that we have that, we can take the square root of 121. Since it's not a negative, we don't need to mess around with i. So it's just going to be 7 plus or minus 11 over 2. So let's do 7 plus 11. That's 18. Now, 18 divided by 2 is going to be 9. So that's x equals, let's see, x equals 9. Now, 7 plus negative 11 is going to be negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is going to equal negative 2. So it's going to be x equals 9 and x equals negative 2. It's just really easy because you can just take the numbers and just plug it into the quadratic formula. This is one of the best formulas out there. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, that was two solutions. There are equations with only one solution. For instance, let's just take 4x squared plus 3x equals negative 13x minus 16. So, just plus 13x plus 16. 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. Now you take these, plug them into the quadratic formula, and then you should get x equals negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 16 squared minus 4 
times 4 times 16 over 2 times 4. Now, once you solve this part, you should get x equals negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 0. Because this right here equals 256 minus 256, which equals 0. So you have negative 16 plus or minus the square root of 0. And then you have 8 underneath from the 2 times 4. Now, since you since this is the square root of 0, you can just literally cancel this out. This now does nothing. Now, negative 16 divided by 8 is going to be negative 2. X equals negative 2. That's one solution. Now, let's do one more quadratic equation, but it has imaginary solutions. So, as I in the solution, X squared plus eight x plus 41 now it's in the right format we can plug it into the quadratic equation which would look like x equals negative eight plus or minus the square root of eight squared minus four times one times 41 over two uh, once that's there you solve this first which would get you negative eight plus or minus the square root of negative 100 over two. What you do is you take the square root of negative 100, I mean, take a square root of 100, which is 10, and just put i in it. So it's gonna be negative eight plus or minus 10 i over two. Now you can't really uh, combine these since 10 has I in it. So what you do is you just divide each by two. So it'll be negative four plus five I or negative four minus five I. But you can just write this as plus or minus. You can just do one equation plus or minus five I. So that's how you get an imaginary solution. Now we're going to be finding the discriminant. Now the quadratic equation is X equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But the discriminant is this part. It is not the square root. b squared minus 4ac is called the discriminant. You need to use this to find certain equations. So b squared minus 4ac, like this equation right here, b squared plus 34b plus 289 equals 0. So, once you do that, you just put in the instrument, so it's going to be b squared, so it's going to be 34 squared minus four times one times 289, which equals 34 squared is 1,156. And when you combined all of these, it also equals 150, 1,156. So since it's minus, we get an all around zero. So there's one real solution, negative 34 four plus or minus the square root of zero and two. That is how you solve for just the discriminant. Now when you use the discriminant, it's used for just three things. To decide whether there's two real solutions, one real solution, or two imaginary solutions. When this equation is greater than zero, there's gonna be two real solutions. When this equation is equal to zero, it's only gonna be one real solution. And when this equation is going to be less than zero, there's going to be two imaginary solutions. So this equation is just to decide whether or not, the, uh, what type of equations there's going to be. Now we're going to move on to something different. This is the shading of a graph. There are four equations that go with it. Y is less than AX squared plus B 
x plus c. Now, there are four types of this. It's y is less than, y is greater than, y is less than or equal to, and y is greater than or equal to. Now, each of these will have a different effect on the graph. If it is going to be just these without the line underneath them, it's going to be a dotted line on a graph. So imagine you have a graph like that, it's gonna be this. We need to figure out what this would look like with either of these equations, since it cannot be these two, since they have a line underneath them. So which of these equations would this be? Shading on the outside. It would be this equation, because y would be less than the equation. What if the shading was in the middle? Now it would be this equation, because here's the function of this, and y is greater than that, so it's gonna be inside. Now let's move on to doing this. And there is shading in here. Then what would it be? Well, it would be this one, because this is the function, and y is less than the function, so it's gonna be on the inside. Now, if it was shading on the outside, it would be this, because y would be greater than this function right here, so it would be on the outside. Now let's move on to the other two types of equations. What if the graph looked like this, and add shading like that? Well, y would be less than or equal to, because y is less than the function, and if the shading was on the inside, it would be this, because y is greater than this function. Let's flip it over. Now, y is outside. It would be y is greater than the function because it's above it. And of course, y on the inside, y would be less than because the equation is above y. That is basically how you distinguish how where the shading would be and what the graphs would look like. These types have a solid line well, these types have a dotted line. Now, there are also uh, parabolas that intersect each other. Like, for instance, we have a U like this, and then a U like this. Now, these are both going to be Y is going to be greater than and equal to, and then Y is going to be less than or equal to. Now, this is A, and this is B. This is parabola A. I'll just trace it in a different color. That's parabola A. And then this is parabola B. Now, parabola B has a greater than or equal to Y. So you shade it up into here. Shade it all the way up there. And then A has a less than. So that shades all the way under here. Now, you see where this section intersects? Well, this color, that, this color, and this would be your answer if you were answering on a graph. This is where the parabolas intersect. So there would be red on top for uh, parabola B, and then blue on bottom for parabola A. And then of course the spot in the middle where the answer would lie. So lastly, we're gonna be doing solving quadratic inequalities algebraically. So let's just put up an equation like this, minus 32, let's just do greater than zero. So x squared plus 4x minus 32 is greater than zero. Now let's just solve this, let's just do the easy way. Um, what plus what or what minus what equals 4 and what times what equals 32? Well, 8 minus 4 equals 4, and 8 times 4 is 32, but it's going to be like a negative 4. 8 plus negative 4 is going to be 4, and 8 times negative 4 is going to be thir negative 32. So now we have our two points. We have negative 8 and 4. Because uh, if you remember from all the way chapter 1, when it's in parentheses and it's divide by a sign, just flip it around and that's actual where it is on the graph. So negative eight and four. We need to know where to put these on a line. 
because that's how you solve thing inequalities algebraically. You get a line, and these are our points. So let's just say negative eight, this is negative nine, negative eight, and let's just do like three and four. So we got our negative nine, negative eight, which is one of our points. So let's just draw a dot at negative eight. And here's our three. Uh, we also have a four from right here. So let's mark that on our number line two. So now this is a uh, sign that is greater than, but there's no equal to under it. So these dots would not be filled. So just get rid of those. And we need one that are like that. When there's no uh, equal to sign underneath the greater than sign or less than th sign, then the dots are, will be open. Now we need to test our equation to see whether which way it'll go, out or in. To do that, we just plug in some random numbers. So let's just make x equal zero. Zero squared will be zero. Four times zero is gonna be zero. And then negative 32. Negative 32 is not greater than zero. When you graph it on a number line, it should look like going to the outside because zero is in the middle and it does not equal zero, which means that x is greater than four or x is less than negative eight. To help you understand better, let's do another one. 2x squared plus 3x is less than or equal to 2. Take the negatives. 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 is less than or equal to 0. Because it's not like an even factoring like the other one, we can just put in the quadratic formula. So x equals negative three plus or minus the square root of three squared minus four times two times negative two over four, which if you solve it all the way through, it becomes x equals negative three plus or minus five over four. When you have the, uh, you can add them together like negative three plus negative five is gonna be negative eight over four or negative two. Or you can do the opposite where it's plus five. So it's gonna be two divided by four, which would be one half. So X equals one half and X equals negative two. So once we got that, let's put it on a number line. Negative two, negative one, zero, one. Let's just do point five in here and number line. Now we can draw, since this is a greater than or equal to, we can do solid dots. Now we need to find out uh, where the line will be going, outside or inside. So let's plug in a random number, zero, zero, negative two. Negative two is less than or equal to zero. Yes, it is. That is a check mark, it is. So, it has zero in it, so bam. There we go. They're connected because zero is in the middle and it checks out. Thank you guys for watching this uh, chapter three math exam review. Just thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.